Hello, Gary Simon of designcourse.com. Today, I'm going to go ahead and review the designcourse.com fifth design challenge, which is all about designing a front of a business card using a logo provided. All right, so basically check out designcourse.com if you haven't yet, subscribe here on YouTube, and let's get started. All right, so let's go ahead, and I'm just gonna real quickly overview this. So we, we gotta design a business card front card only just to make it a little bit more simple um, use a provided logo uh, blah 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 you know I don't think we really need to overview this too much <clears throat> so I uh, so we'll go here with the first one psyops I uh, all right so I kind of wish that we would have seen this a little bit bigger uh, just to see it I mean you can see everything just fine here but just to see it a little bit larger would be It'd be a little bit more helpful but uh, a couple things they definitely did right is I kept it simple relatively um, uh, in terms of color definitely influenced the color uh, and used it consistently which is always a good thing I uh, the one thing that I would definitely change about it though is the relation of this text compared to this text over here all right or the logo rather so you would definitely want this logo here to stand out more so than the text over here and so that's not the case so that's why if you had a you know if you showed this or you uploaded this on a big bigger resolution it'd be easier to you know scale the text down in relation to the logo that way it'd be easier to see so you did definitely get some things right you know contrast everything's good uh, complexity is kept too minimal so yeah just that uh, sizing probably would have made a big difference in my opinion all right so B to DL I uh, by the way, did you ask if you could change your username? I think you did, and then I forgot to respond. Anyhow, let me know if that's the issue. All right, so I uh, B2DL entered several different entries. This is the first one. I would say right off the bat, just drop the usage of the soft inner shadows, uh, and then also the outer shadow, because what ha kind of happens is, I mean, it, it makes for a cool effect visually usually, but when it's used so much uh, to this extent, it becomes overused basically so I would try to just you know you don't need to use these especially in relation with the uh, you have like a stroke uh, probably like an inner stroke on on these right here and it seems like you know just from my opinion it's just a little bit too much so I think you did enter some other entries I'm not sure though um, that I'll address here so this one's an interesting concept I uh, but the one thing I'm curious about is how this would play out right over here uh, if this were an actual business card so you know would you have to sit there and cut this out I uh, <laughs> that would be a little bit tedious uh, I'm not sure if there's services who would actually do that for you uh, but anyhow I, I actually aside from that I like the design it's very simple you could see I uh, if I zoom up here oops for some reason I go too much you can't see it anymore I uh, you can see in here there's kind of like a honeycomb pattern so I like that I uh, let me get back to 100% and this is not too bad either uh, I would probably make it just a tad bit bigger or make the text black and ditch the uh, the outer glow I can see there's an outer outer glow or a drop shadow of some sort which is a little bit darker to make it stand out more but I think just changing it to black against this lighter green would be better in my opinion but yeah overall simplicity I like it contrast is good uh, it has appeal and yeah it's good good stuff so uh, quail Christ, we have a bunch of entries here I uh, so let's see <sighs> let me copy the image here real quick and see if it's okay that's a, it's a little bit bigger just a view in this area so basically I yeah, there's a lot happening in all of these. I can't really go through all of them, but if I had to compare and just like look at them real quick and say which one that I think would be or that I personally think is the best and just in terms of general design, I would probably say uh well right away I would get rid of this. I this trill thing is probably meant to emulate a uh, sound wave or a uh, speaker or something, but I in terms of like uh, white space, there's not too much of it. There's a lot happening, so I would just I would cross this off the list uh, 
in this one. There's kind of a lot happening here too. I, his head is almost a little bit too close to the basics part. Uh, and then down here you have like more space. So that kind of throws things off just a little, just looking at the space between the bottom of this illustration and at the top. Like if you were to scale them down a little bit more, uh, maybe move them over to the right because you can notice this area gets over here. So just uh, in terms of adjustments, I would adjust uh, things like that. This over here, there's not a lot of contrast. This is like a, a gray type of colors. And, and in this, uh, I would definitely say between these bottom ones, I, I think these bottom ones are better than the top ones, honestly. Um, if you look over here, I... Uh, yeah, I'm not too much a fan of this because the 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 John Doe the, the contact information is just kind of hanging up here in the middle. Maybe just in terms of positioning, I would you know, basically okay. Up here we see basics on the top of it. We have a certain amount of white space, which is good. It's equal from the left and the top. But down here beneath, beneath this text, we have a lot more. So to really frame a card and a design in general, you got to try to to keep the alignments all uh, similar. And so if you drop this down, then you might want to drop this in, in between in the exact middle. And the, the card would just flow better and the design would just look better with just a minor change like that. Uh, so yeah, uh, this over here, this text is kind of big, but again, uh, this is shown, like, the, the card sizes are a little bit small to really uh, be able to review them real well, but, but yeah. I would say either this, and again, maybe dropping this down, this text just down a little bit more away from the hands because you can see it gets a little bit cluttered right here. Uh, this might be pretty, might be the best, or this could be the best. Uh, I think this text would be, it's just a tad bit big, but again, we're sh it's shown at a small size, so it kind of has to be for it to be readable. But anyhow, uh, overall not bad. And, and sometimes it's, it's, it's good to, to show the card in a real life concept like this. I like this one more than this one. All right, and over here, when we just see the card, because uh, you submitted um, another variation of this, when we see just the card in and of itself uh, flat like this, well, we could see some issues with uh, the, the, the font aliasing, or we could see uh, it just looks like jagged around there. Uh, but when you look at it down here, you really can't tell because of the perspective and all that, but it's something you want to be wary of. It looks pixelated. Uh, but aside from that, I would try to stay away from these soft inner shadows. There's something that they were, these were used huge back like in the late nineties and early two thousands with everybody, every new designer gets a copy of Photoshop and they'll just apply one of the layer styles. And one of them would always be either drop shadow or inner shadow. So it's something in terms of modern design that you just don't see often anymore because it was something that kind of just, it, it came and it gone in terms of that. So there's certainly uses for it though, but applied as it is here, I would say, you know, I would stay. I would stay away from it. Maybe I would take the, uh, make it so it's not feathered at all, uh, and maybe decrease the uh, the the distance, and it would work fine. But I, uh, yeah, I like this area over here, especially you kind of see it uh, in a in a three D context. I, I aside from just the inner shadow, I definitely like it. I, uh, and it works well, in my opinion. So I like the speaker. So thanks for that entry. Uh, B2DL, got another one here. This one, the, the basics logo with the, I guess you could say sound bars. <laughs> when I designed it, I don't even know what the hell I was doing. I think that's what my intention was. I just did it real fast. Anyhow, inside the text, it makes it kind of hard just to read the actual logo. If you could see over here and over here. Maybe I would have, if you wanted to go after the effect, maybe just uh, take the opacity of these inner ones down a lot or make the inside of the text black. Anyhow, I and then I would probably, also this looks pixelated for some reason. I'm not sure if it's something I did or not, but yeah, this kind of looks like blurry for some reason. I don't know why, but anyhow, I, yeah, in terms of, again, like the drop shadow from the speaker, it's just the same, it would be the same critique that I have up here in terms of just something that's been overused and you don't really see any top designers using the drop shadow thing too much in this type of usage, I guess you could say, or context. Uh, 
but yeah, I I would also no- notice the the white space in a margin between John like the E and Do, and then over here it's like real close. So it would probably be an improvement if you just take the five 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 and the email and put it right over here underneath, smaller size as well. Uh, but yeah, just a couple of gripes with this obviously, just the drop shadow and then the alignments over here, and then DJC. All right, so this is real simple, obviously. I uh, I like it. I in, in terms of it being simple, I like it almost almost too simple. I would say maybe even just like a slight type of watermark almost could go in here. Uh, but yeah, in terms of the design, I like it. Uh, you can see the number down here uh, in the information, and you can also see this. So it has good uh, contrast, color, white space. So pretty good. And then X matrix, uh, let's see here. Uh, at first, I didn't know what the heck was going on, honestly. But then if I did this, I could see, okay, this is the card because the background was completely white. Uh, so again, with the, the whole shadow thing right here, I would definitely minimize this, uh, maybe scrap it, uh, or definitely take the opacity down a, a lot on it. That way it doesn't stick out so much. Same thing over here over here on the sides and I'm not too sure about the 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 yellow I would use green or something just to try to keep it consistent with the color scheme of the logo itself which is shades of green and white I uh, and then I would also probably get rid of these too it just seems like it's a little bit overdoing it for the sake of a business card I uh, and then maybe even maybe rearrange it so that the telephone number and the email are kind of in a central location. And then this one, same gripe with the, the inner shadow, the soft inner shadow, I would try to get rid of that. Not try, I would. But I, and also there's kind of, I would say this is a little bit too uh, bright of a, the, like well, it's turquoise, and it just kind of clashes with the white a little bit, and also the green. It doesn't really go together too well. So uh, if you just made this this circle black, it would almost just be better, or do one of the honey, honeycomb pattern uh, overlays on it. But uh, th when it comes to these two cards, these top two, these top these uh, bottom two are definitely better from submissions. The only uh, issue is is just uh, this turquoise color again. Even though there's like a drop shadow on this, uh, it's still you can see these two much better in terms of contrast. So I would just I would make this green actually. To stick with this color and then you would be able to see it like a darker green and you would be able to see the text on top of it so in terms of layout and how the card is designed overall this is definitely better than those two up there and then uh, in terms of this one definitely better than these two up here I would say I uh, when it comes to the, the size of this inner portion and the text inside of it it just kind of seems too small I, I would either decrease the size of this or probably increase the size of John Doe and the graphic designer underneath it. But things are lined up pretty good here, so that's good. All right, so Tobias. This one, not too bad. Uh, when it comes to the speaker, especially for print and, and even just viewing it right here, I, I would have, when it comes to this inner when it comes to the speaker time we have darker parts and then we have only slightly lesser darker parts i i would make the lighter portions a lot lighter that way we can see the details of the actual woofer or the speaker um aside from that i would almost probably take this uh john doe and this text move it away from the edge so much a little bit maybe starting right here and then maybe right align the basics to that same uh, vertical axis, you could, I guess you could call it. Uh, other than that, good contrast aside from you know the inner speaker design uh, and simplicity as well. All right, you kind of see the same thing here. All right, this one, man, this is starting to take a long time. We're getting more entries here. I uh, I actually like this. It's simple. There's not too much to say about it because I uh, like I said, it's kept simple. I uh, if I copy image URL we could see this bigger um, yeah I like this it has that cool honeycomb sort of speaker cover pattern which is relevant 
reinforcing the brand colors. I like that. I uh, and everything else kept pretty simple. So I would say good job. Not wood. I am. Why do I say stupid shit like that? Anyhow, Daniel Kerr or whatever. I. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is one of the, uh, you could definitely do inset business cards. Um, and this is a good representation of it. There's not too much to say about it because it is very simple. Uh, I would say, though, it seems like yeah, the all the font sizes seem pretty good. And then we have like this tiny portion over here. So I would just find a way to lay it out so that you don't have to change up the font size so much in between these. But yeah, otherwise good. <laughs> And B2DL, these ones I would say are better than his other entries, um, though I think a couple small changes with this would really make it a, a lot better in my opinion. So over here, when it, I would say I definitely like the, the darker card better, but to change this sort of sound wave thing going over here, maybe make it uh, sort of like a darker green color, that way it's not sticking out so much. I... Uh, and then maybe a change of the font. I know you're going for that sort of look, but when it comes to the email and the numbers, are they're almost a little bit too hard to read, but you can still go with that type of font, maybe just not so extreme as the letters are. But anyhow, um, and then maybe just move this down a little bit over here. That way you have a good use as a white space. There's one coming up, an entry that I kind of suggest, or did what I'm suggesting. All right, and... This is from Brian. I uh, like it. Just different views, different looks. And then we have the whole business card down here. So this is what I was talking about from the previous entry. Uh, there's a lot of white space usage, and I really like it. Uh, I think, let me see here. I mean, maybe the font size could be increased just a tad bit, but not too much more. Uh, and I, I, just, I, I really like it. I very, like when it comes to, okay, so he used an inner shadow. I uh, and also a drop shadow, but you can barely tell, and you could see it. Let me copy the image here. I see if you can see this bigger. Well, no. I uh, you can see it. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it on my video, but I uh, the drop shadow is like a very maybe a one or two pixel line, and it's not feathered at all, it's, and. You can see it's very it's it's just a little bit lighter than this color, and that really gives the appearance of light coming down or it being 3D in a sense. Uh, same thing with this up here. This is like an inner shadow, and this time it's darker. So this is a technique that you can use. I think it did like a GUI graphical user interface design tutorial based on like redesigning some of the Adobe Photoshop's uh, the GUI basically. And I show how to do this sort of effect. It's pretty easy. but And it's also pretty nice looking. So, yeah, I like it. And then Maddie Hurijas. I, I always just chop the name up when I try to pronounce it. I, I like this as well. We have kind of like a, this isn't a honeycomb, but this is a, kind of like just a bunch of circles. And they have a, probably an inner shadow on the bottom. And I like it because it just makes it feel like it's a, like a speaker cover um we have a lot of good usage of the color in relation to these colors right here reinforcing them i uh, i like this kind of makes it feel like you know the general speaker when you think of a speaker you think of round so he's incorporated that into the design in a unique kind of abstract way so i like it it's, it definitely helps to see as well uh, when you're designing a business card to see it like in a 3D sense. So I like this a lot as well. So these were good entries. All right. And then Bach Bami. Big Bami. Right now it's probably Bach Bami, right? Uh, so here's a submission. Uh, good usage of you know, the, the uh, low design colors over here. I'm not sure, too sure. I don't like the uh, the the tagline, uh, the font, not not the actual tagline, uh, but the font. And uh, I would probably almost make it make it regular, just to keep you know the the font type or the the logo, the word mark is a regular. It's not italicized. And generally, when it comes to designing logos in your taglines or slogans, you want to try to keep them of the font, the same font styles. So either have them both be italicize or both be uh, regular that way it keeps it consistent uh, in terms of you know the appearance all right so 
And then down here, uh, you can see there's a very faint uh, watermark of, of somebody listening to uh, headphones. And, and so that could work pretty well. Uh, although when it comes to print, it may not show up too well. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, yeah, and that is it. So now I'm forced to uh, choose a winner based on all these. And I like this one. And in terms of, you know, just trying to remember through all of these submissions, I like this one as well. And I also like this one. So this is a tough decision. I think it's definitely between this one and this one, though. Only because of that one, the whole cutoff edge, uh, just that would be kind of difficult in terms of having thousands, like 100 or 200 of those. I'm not sure, um, but but anyhow, in terms of design, I like these. Um, I'm gonna pause, and I'm gonna really have to think about why I'm gonna choose the winner, because I haven't done it beforehand. All right, this was a tough one, you know, because there's things that I like about both of them, and then things that would maybe, they're both, in a sense, different uh, two different they're almost like apples and oranges i guess you could say in terms of uh, i know they're both business card designs but the approach that each of them took is different but they executed it well so this one i uh, this this sucks i hate doing this i don't want to pick have to pick a winner between these two and it's a good thing because no one wins anything there's no prizes or anything i like this for simplicity and i like this i uh, just for I guess you could say effectively using uh, all the space pretty well and uh, the layout, I like it. So you know what? I'm not picking a winner because I don't want to. I don't feel like there is a winner between both of these, personally at least. So uh, you know, in boxing, you can have a tie or a draw. Well, we're going to have a tie for our first time here and a draw as well. So yeah, it is between Brian and mad hope you're not mad over this you guys got a tie uh but yeah they're both very well designed cards and thanks everybody else as well for the submissions i uh, i definitely think you know when it comes to these like business cards and logo design you know there's just a few things that some of you will get wrong and i think there will be a moment where you say aha you know in terms of you know just very small changes that you can make that can make big differences in, in terms of just the overall quality of your designs. So yeah, definitely thanks for submissions. And uh, let's see if there's anything I can show yet. I've been working on my site. I'll just throw here this in here at the end. Uh, I'm getting premium ready. And oh man, it's a lot of work. I got to do page for VizID, Mentor, Wise Banner, and then the order page. And we will be ready to rock. Anyhow, yep, that's what I've been doing. So thanks for the entries. Look out for uh, the designcourse.com design challenge number six. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. You can always offer suggestions, though, as you guys have already, and I'll look over those and then decide what we're going to do. All right, check out designcourse.com, of course. Subscribe here on YouTube, and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.